Hello, friends. My name is Steve, and we are here today to discuss the film Men. <laughs> today, I'm with Anthony, uh, Tony, thanks for joining me today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, men. Yeah, gotta, gotta love those men. <laughs> yeah. Well, a few days ago, you told me you had asked me if I had seen it yet. I told you no, and you said the the last twenty minutes or so is yeah. It's it's a thing. Oh yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is a, a strange one. Um, so other than other than the the last twenty minutes, I guess. Uh, what else did you think of the film? I mean, overall, um, I thought it played really well. I, I'm a I'm a big fan of like kind of Wicker Man style, Alex Garland uh, in general. Um, you know, with um, Annihilation that he kind of put out on Netflix, I think maybe two years ago now, three years ago. can't remember. I think so, yeah. Yeah, and, um, uh, you know, Ex Machina and whatnot. I, I really like his um, his style of directing and the kind of subject matter that he chooses to direct as well. So when I first saw Men uh, and I saw the trailer, I just thought this is this is really up my street. I, I love the kind of whole folky sort of like Green Man, uh, Wicker Man type inspiration going on behind this. Um, and the fact that they had uh, Rory Kinnear play the same, well, has the faces of different characters. Sure. And that, that just, I was in, I was all in like from the very beginning. And... Um, yeah, I watched this when it first came out and I was kind of engrossed by it sort of thing. Um, I was sitting, I, I remember, uh, coming out of it, uh, and talking to my partner and we were just like, just absorbing it, I think is the right word to say. Um, and just kind of like going, there's probably some really deep themes at play here. Um, uh, I could only come out with like a few at the top of my head sort of thing. I'm, I'm one of those, I like to be able to sort of see a sort of theme and sort of try and dissect it a little bit. But I think there was just like things out of context that I just probably flew over my head in that respect. How did you, how did you find it? I, I liked it. I think, so there's a, I think a lot of it has to do, well, okay. There's a lot. Um, so the green, there's man, a lot I to think, unpack, right? There's yeah. A lot there's a lot to, to unpack. unpack. That's the thing. Yeah. So the green man, I think, okay. So Harper, I believe is the main character's name. She's feeling this guilt because her husband, who was soon to be her ex-husband, may or may not have committed suicide because of what mm -hmm. happened. Or he at least threatened her with it. Um, I'm not sure if he, they leave it vague whether he jumped or whether he slipped. Yeah, they leave it a bit ambiguous. Um, she's essentially in this kind of very toxic kind of relationship. Um, he's kind of gaslighting her. And also at the same time abusing her with his um, self-destructive tendencies, mm -hmm. um, and with any kind of good gothic horror film, and I, I would put this under the gun kind of gothic horror premise. Um, there is that kind of like the main character having some sense of guilt or some sense of tragedy about them, and I think this really kind of works well because it's kind of like peppered throughout the narrative. Um, you see, like the you know the you see something happen like uh we, we're, we're basically going to spoilers right so yeah yeah we'll yeah, go spoil, yeah, full spoilers yeah yeah so um at the very beginning um you see just this, like this glimpse of him falling like she's in this high rise in london um and you just see a glimpse of him out the window and he's falling down and exactly what you said there steve like you don't know whether this as it as the story progresses you're not sure whether he slipped was he just going up there to kind of taunt her a little bit maybe or something or you know that I, there was even elements that i thought like that she had actually like snapped kind of thing and you know mm -hmm. she had like pushed him essentially but um it's all left a little bit ambiguous um to kind of let you think well maybe there is that kind of uh sort of sense of maybe she's guilty for a reason I, I think um but yeah she goes to this little like um it's like airbnb in this village a uh, very quaint English town. Um, uh, I've been to a few of them. They're great. They're fantastic. Great way to spend a summer vacation, sort of a long weekend away. Um, yeah. And sorry, go on, Steve. Are there a lot of those places there that you can just visit? Like a lot of those little 
Oh yeah, so. you can. I mean, yeah, you can. You can go. Um, you can go to the countryside for a weekend. Like, uh, I don't know what it's like for you guys, sort of the way you are, sort of thing. But you can just like you can book an Airbnb. Um, you'll find a little very quaint cottage house. Um, you know, at the back arse of end of nowhere. Um, you know, and let your troubles let your troubles go away. And that's essentially what Harper's doing in this. She's getting yeah. away from it all. Um, she's just wanting a kind of like. So I I don't know how long she actually does it say how long she's actually there for I'm not sure if they say that mm. she's there for like a, a long weekend or a week or a couple of weeks or she's just out she's just getting out of the city sort of thing I think she's getting out of the city but it's I kind of got the idea that it'd be a, a week or two like a few weeks like it should be yeah. there for a little while not just a weekend but yeah. she seems she's to be getting pretty settled in yeah yeah she's there to kind of decompress and uh, take her mind off things. And um, yeah, she, <laughs> she meets um, Jeffrey, the Tim Nice but Dim uh, guy, who's like this uh, very <laughs> antiquated sort of like uh, like oh hello, yeah, so you've come to the you've come to the manor sort of thing, and like he, he I mean Rory Kinnear is like playing so many different characters in this, mm. um, and he does it in such a great way like you can just see he's embellishing every role he plays like a a bit of a seedy vicar that you see on the in the background sort of icon there that you've got sort of thing that kind of lays into her guilt a little bit more mm. um he plays like a child as well a very kind of scary kind of like it, like it looks like a, a mask he's wearing in that right one like how they did certain bits of this would just left me a bit flummoxed like i was like sitting there going oh that's really good um, he plays like a cop, a very kind of like weary, indifferent sort of cop who's uh, like usually sees her in the pub and is like, you know, I don't really care about what's going on with you. Then also plays a, a naked man, just like running around, but but to the wind. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the significance of him playing all those characters? Well, I, th- I originally I thought it was really interesting because at no point does she in the film give the viewer um the suggestion that she knows that these are all the kind of same people and there is this thing i think uh what was it um was it the annie kaufman film the the, the animated one uh Anim- animesia animesia mm. i think that's what it's called there's this uh uh frugelli sort of delusion where you have a character or you have someone who's got the same face and i think this really goes and uh, is entwined with the kind of men aspect of the thing where she's been in this abusive relationship and therefore she's doing this kind of not was it the kind of Mandela type effect where she see everyone that she's coming across is the same person because she's just identifying her trauma with in a guess of like in man but um yeah I think it kind of works well because she never really gives off the sense that everyone that she's seen is the same person because if you'd see the same person you'd be like oh are you guys brothers like the first one jeffrey that she comes across the tim nice but dim character i think the next person she sees then is the police officer or someone but then it becomes just very apparent that everyone that she's meeting has the same face and at some point as a person you'd be like this is a bit weird now at first i thought maybe your brothers but maybe it's but it's never really uh, well to my eyes it was never really kind of accounted for that the people that she's seen are the same, has the same face. So I just kind of went along with it. And I think throughout the film as well, you get to that kind of point where you're just, you, it becomes, they become like an easel, if that, like a mm-hmm. blank canvas in that respect. So each character is coming now with traits of different things that are just pervading or predatory or in some, in, in, in whatever kind of malevolent reason to her, um, they're, they're offering something that's a bit ominous. So mm-hmm. I think to have the same actor's face on all these different characters actually does work well because then you can see Jeffrey as this kind of nice character to begin with, but then as things progress and the story develops, you're like, well, actually, maybe he's just a bit too uh, sort of like, you know, those kind of characters in these type of films that are a bit too nice, a bit too in your space, a bit too mm-hmm. in your personal uh, bubble sort of thing. And as I said, like with the vicar, who starts off really nice <laughs> and then goes a bit sort of sinister with like and then he says the kind of like you know the guilt thing like she's she opens up to him she actually opens up to him and you can see this kind of thing in relationships where you know you probably have had someone who's been maybe abused in the past and they like finally find someone who can just like listen to them but then that that is betrayed instantly 
and then he just tries to grow like it's yeah and all those different things and the child i think then there's different elements at play as well with like the childlike innocence but also with a very kind of sadistic nature later on as well and um uh, the police officer who at the, the car uh, off the top of my head sort of thing just is very indifferent doesn't listen yeah. to her so i think it's basically my my opinion anyway is like all these different characters um all these different um you know people have a different trait but also at the same time lead her to believe that none of them can be trustworthy none of them can be someone that she can rely on and uh ultimately is some uh, the kind of thing that she's experienced before with her partner who's uh may have committed suicide sort of thing so yeah yeah they all seem to serve almost like a blank canvas for her and mm. I, I wondered if 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 they're really if they are really so similar or if she's just perceiving them in that way because she's so wrapped up in her own guilt yeah definitely i mean I, that that was something that i thought originally that when after the jeffrey character that invites her into the airbnb and shows her around and it like that jeffrey character is really great because it's like oh this is the the little piano room and like where you can sit and yeah. you know do your things um then she goes for a bit of a walkabout i believe and then um yeah you just see this kind of figure in the dark in, in, the, in the silhouette of someone but you know instinctively that something's not quite right here um and then with the kind of police officer who's uh, police officer who's meant to be this kind of figure of authority this figure of you know someone who you can be safe with is just very indifferent towards her plight um yeah so that there's a lot of that going on and I, yeah i think as a viewer you you have that kind of not disconnection as such but you're thinking why why is this the same person like why what's but there is something internally I think it's more of a kind of feeling that you have more, you know, uh, sometimes you can get a, bit, get a bit kind of cerebral about things that you see on screen. And sometimes that can really disconnect you. Like when you see some bad CGI, mm. you know, it's uncanny Valley style and that can sometimes sever you from the actual flow of what's happening. This I think did something really good, which even though you're seeing the same character or the same actor's face on different characters, you kind of swept into it. You, you don't really question it at the time anyway. You kind of like maybe think later on, maybe this, maybe that, maybe that. But at the same yeah. time, you're, you're just going with the flow because it, although it's a, I wouldn't say this is a very, it's a slow paced film, but there are elements where, uh, you know, she's kind of going through it sort of thing. She takes long walks. There's that one lock down that tunnel that you can see in the trailer as well, where she's just kind of doing that. Ah, ah, and they do the, orchestral type of thing which i thought was brilliant as well yeah. um and it all crescendos to this kind of uh end act sort of thing where yeah things didn't happen i also wondered if if all the men looking the same was kind of like a, all men are the same and maybe that's her mindset or that's where she is because they do this like the police officer does dismiss her like oh he's harmless we let him go it's no big deal it, you know give him a break kind of it's like it's your fault and not really blaming her but just kind of like well you're making a big deal out of nothing it's not really a big deal or um yeah i mean definitely I, I think that is the case like she she is coming to this place to resolve a kind of trauma in her life um and that's the the other element of that gothic event that i was talking to about uh, saying about earlier sort of thing where regarding you know some of the like may that's where I kind of thought maybe she's the unreliable narrator in this whole mm. sort of story um, because of the fact that you're seeing this kind of um, this uh, actor's face um, all the time. And I kind of thought to myself, oh, OK, so maybe this is going to be a thing where we then find out through the flashbacks with her partner, um, James, that um, there will be a moment where she ends up killing him. And therefore, this is going to be sort of explained in a kind of way because she's perceiving every man that she now comes across as a potential threat or yeah. you know s someone that um she can't really trust sort of thing so yeah no I, I definitely kind of got that vibe as well yeah yeah um very uh you know the use of colors i thought was interesting because on her flashbacks a lot of them are red yeah yeah and the 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 present what happens in the present is very vibrant and green very luscious greens and very eye-popping sort of uh saturation going on yeah i think that i mean i mean 
once again, I think that was a decision by Alex Garland sort of thing to kind of represent those. I mean, obviously you have the green man, which in a kind of like folk, there's a very kind of folk tale story element at play here. And I'll be completely like, I, I don't know the whole element of the green man, if, like what he represents in terms of, um, you know, fertility. And like, there's that whole, there's a whole section where uh, when she first comes to the the manor or the, the cottage kind of thing. And Jeffrey says like, makes a bit of a joke about she takes a, an apple from the tree and um, he's like, oh, eating the forbidden fruit, which has that Adam and Eve element to it, you know, the serpent right. um, over the shoulder sort of thing. Um, but that does come into play a little bit later on as well, where you have, yeah, this 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 kind of um, serpentine type element at play with 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 Jeffrey in particular sort of thing. But then um, also you have these like different characters that do then sort of transcend to this. I don't want to say biblical element to it but there is that kind of folk story play going on uh and even though i'm not like the i'm not an expert on that type of mythology or that type of um folk story um you do get a sense that there is something otherworldly at play here yeah. um that's not really explained but then it doesn't have to be explained um so i don't know if you that was something you kind of caught up of you had a kind of interpretation of it sort of thing yeah I, could, I looked into the green man a little bit and i think what it represents here from what i've looked into is like rebirth or like spring or um you know like that um revitalization or you know like and so i kind of felt like the green man was her chance to to get over her guilt or to have like a rebirth yeah um that's kind of what i'm thinking is that what that's what that represented is the, the green man at the end but and that is figuratively uh yeah, oh, yeah. Later on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I wonder if that because they do uh, they birth over and over again mm -hmm. uh, so I, I did was that too, you think that happened too many times was one time enough um <sighs> I mean, I think it had, it had that kind of society vibe to it, you know, which it was, I think, because it went on for so long, it became almost um, unpleasant to watch in the respect of it was like, how long is this actually going to go on for? Um, and, I, okay. you know, uh, people that I know that have watched it since and I've spoken to them about it, they always come back to the, 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 the birthing scene at the end. And it's like, everyone was just like, what was going on like what was that all about um it did like how many times was it it was probably like four or five no four it was five. more than that was at a least few. So, yeah, yeah it was a, a few times um and it just sort of seemed not to come out of nowhere but it just seemed so detached from everything else that we've thus seen um it just it had that once again that kind of otherworldly vibe to things um, so I think, yeah, I mean, I think you're completely right. I think like the, the whole, like her, um, going to this, this quaint little village, um, to kind of get away from things, uh, was her rebirth to, you know, put the past away from her, but then also maybe she was manifesting mm. what she perceived as man through those rebirthing processes. And maybe, I don't know, but this could be like an Easter egg. But it would be interesting to see how many characters um, that Rory Kinnear played, like how many times mm. it rebirths. Because I'm not sure if it did it every for every character that was on in the film. But I so would, would imagine that would be something maybe a bit Easter eggy to kind of say, like every person that she's come across since uh, in the village is now, you know, transcending or um, mm. going to a higher plane. I don't know. He plays. Let me see. Quite a few characters. He plays the the dim the dim. <laughs> I forget his name. The Jeffrey Tim Nice, but Jeffrey. Jim, yeah. uh, him. He plays the police officer. He plays the bartender. Then there's the two. Yeah. There's two people in the bar who are just there drinking. One of the yeah, they're just like the in the background. Mullet. Yeah, yeah. He's a the the like the teenager who calls her a bitch and <laughs> just like walks away. Mm. Um. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think. I think that was it. So that may, may be everyone. You got the kid as well. Yeah, the kid. Um, oh, and the naked and then, guy. Yeah, and the naked guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, that was, I, I'll be honest, that was the only kind of character that I, I think they do describe it. And like, he's just like, oh, that's just Andy or something. He just, you know, he's out there and sorry about him. But what are you going to do? It's like, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you've got a guy who's just like randomly walking around the fields um, naked. Like, uh, yeah, I think you might need to have a little chat with him and uh, make sure he's okay, you know, so... Yeah. yeah, he he puts his hand through the through the uh, little the, the leather box, yeah, yeah. slot. Mm. Um, the another thing I wondered about was once once he puts his hand through the the door and she drops the knife on him and he pulls his hand out and every version of him has that that same yeah. injury. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't really know how to interpret that to be honest. I didn't know if that was more a metaphorical stance on, um, you know, the kind of, this might be going a bit too philosophical, waxing <laughs> philosophical about like past relationships and stuff, but I didn't know if that was more of a kind of case of the damage that you do or the damage that's caused to you or that you caused to other people in previous relationships then still stays there. You know, like that whole thing, uh, there's that... <clears throat> There's that thing about um, a teacher, uh, sorry, a parent going to their son or daughter and saying, like, crumple up a piece of paper. Now try and flatten it out. And it's like, you'll never get, like, a completely uh, sort of clean sheet of paper. It's always going to be crumpled. And that's the kind of way of, like, when you treat people in a certain way, then there's always going to be that impact. There's always going to be that kind of um, after effect, if you will. So I, I, that's what I took away from it. I could be completely wrong. I probably am. <laughs> But I kind of just, I mean, yeah, it's the, it's the kind of, um, the body horror is very Cronenberg in the film as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she kind of sticks the knife in and he, he just tears through it. So you've basically got these like floppy, the floppy hand, <laughs> haven't you, sort of thing, but the <laughs> floppy um, kind of uh, crab hand in that respect. So, um, yeah, I, I took it in that respect because it, it, it did become apparent that every then iteration of a, another character, the cage, still had that one, uh, wound. Um, so I didn't know if that was maybe something along the lines of the trauma that's inflicted with uh, this other person. But then I kind of got this weird vibe of like a T-1000, like a Terminator 2 thing. Like, is it just, is it the same person? Like, is the person, is this the, the green man? That That's where the, my mind went then. I was like, that can't be right, though. That can't be right, can it? That it's like the, all the people are like this one entity in whatever way, like a hive mind type of thing. Hmm. Um yeah so what i was wondering is because i was looking at his name james the when he when she finds his body he has he lands and i think he yes one of his legs are broken like mm -hmm. pointed the wrong way and the other hand has the like a like a bar going through his hand yes but later in the film when jeffrey all the versions of jeffrey they all they're all limping but the same leg and then mm -hmm. they have the hand injury so i thought maybe that was a connection somehow to James and the way that she found him or the way he died. Yeah. I mean, once again, we're going to that. It's, it's one of those things Like, I think you can, you can take away, you can come out of this film and you can take away this sort of segment of, or you could go like thinking, okay, maybe, maybe um, this, this village that she's gone to doesn't exist. Maybe this is all in her mind. You could take that version. Okay. So if you take that version, you, you kind of say what you're saying there with the limp in the hand and everything, then yeah, these traumas that have been inflicted is like her mind trying to um, process because like, it's, it's a bad scene. Like you yeah. find them impaled on these spikes kind of thing. Um, and you wouldn't want to see that, you know, in any kind of situation, but like it's, yeah, it's very, it's a very subtle, um, element at play here but you could sort of associate that like every person then has the kind of limp or the, the kind of wound is in fact james um that's one route you could sort of do and that's that's what i like about alex garland films and stuff like you can take away you can come out of it and you can be like i thought this and it's a it's a really good um discussion piece that you can have with your friends and everything like that where you can come out of it and you can have like this version or you can have that version uh and there's no wrong there's no wrong version there's no uh you know it's it's just one of those things where there might there probably is a right thing yeah. of it but um I, I i personally took it as yeah like as you were saying um i think that the the trauma of like inflicted sort of thing from james is something that she's kind of then impressed on these townsfolk people 
um, whether they've realized it or not, it, whether it's in her head or not. Um, I always like the unreliable narrator aspect of things. So I was always in the mindset of maybe these, maybe not that they're not real, but she's dealing with her trauma in this way. And that kind of subtext of what she's seen in the past is coming out in these very nuanced, these very kind of subtle ways. And that's what I took away from it. I thought it was just a woman who's gone through some severe trauma. She's dealing with it in a kind of, I don't want to say like PTSD sort of way, but she's dealing with it in a kind of way that um, allows her mind to accept it. But there's always going to be these little things that come out from the that sidestep her and that's her guilt. That's her, that's her trauma. That's her grief that she's allowing herself to um, go through during yeah. the film. So that, that, that was my takeaway of it, but I could be completely wrong. You know, <laughs> I think you're right. I think there's no really right or wrong answer. I think it's just to be interpreted different ways, but I did wonder if it was in her head, but at the end when her friend shows up and the car is wrecked, I guess she yes. could have wrecked it herself, but mm. that's kind of the point where I thought maybe it's not in her head. Maybe something else is going on. Yeah. The only thing there's one, I don't know if you do this as well, sort of thing with, with certain films where you think there could be an unreliable narrator or the main protagonist is um, you're always like, has she, has she, has, is she with this person on her own? And this film does that in space. Like she's always with just one light like, character apart from the pub, I think mm. uh, where she's like with multiple characters, but they're all the same. Like, I think she's always just by herself with uh, the Rory Kinnear variation of what it might be um i think there might be a scene where she's talking to her friend on the phone i can't remember oh but um, yeah, and and the guy's he's standing outside of her window yeah yeah but um apart from that that's always an indicator to me that through the logic of the um uh story at play here it can only be that she's you know seeing someone because she's seen it herself no one else it's like the whole Superman effect, like Clark Kent and <laughs> Superman are never in the same room. It's that type of appeal of, you know, if she's talking to this person, is she talking to herself? Is she actually talking to a person who's not the person that she thinks she's talking to, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we've seen that throughout cinema, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, I think this is done like men is done in such a good way in respect, in, in the respect of um, she's, you know, every every character has something that they can either offer her or relieve her of certain guilts or certain her story. And then um, there's just like this odd twist of the knife that kind of comes seemingly out of nowhere sometimes, uh, much like the vicar. Like you do think like, oh, she's talking to this guy. It's, it's, it's going actually really well. And then he just kind of turns it a bit 180 um, on her and all that kind of respect. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, pretty, I was I was really impressed with uh, Jesse Buckley's per, Harper, her performance. Yeah. She does a lot of, uh, well, I think all the way, there's only really two actors, two or three actors in the whole movie. But yeah. uh, of course, Rory Kinnear does a lot of a lot of work too with all the different personas he plays. But Harper, I thought was great in this one too. Oh yeah, like, <clears throat> sorry, pardon me. Um, it's, it's a kind of, it's a weird tour de force ensemble cast but there are really mainly two actors three <laughs> james the husband um oh yeah that's right yeah but like um what's the uh there was another film i was thinking of where you know you have like a kind of uh character who um plays multiple different versions of themselves or multiple different things i can't remember what it was off the top of my head maybe it was uh peter sellers in um dr strange love but um yeah it's 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 a commendable thing. Like the last thing that I saw Jesse Buckley in was actually a game that I played, which was the mm. um uh the name's just gone out of my head now. It's the kind of super massive one, uh the uh like multiple decisions will oh, oh god. <laughs> it's gone now. But like it was really interesting um to see her just turn up because that the, the character models are done from the, the the actors themselves and stuff like that as well. So um yeah, once again, as I said, like uh, Rory Kinnear like when he played um i don't know if you've seen the the first black i think it's the first black mirror episode uh where he mm -hmm. plays the prime minister where um oh, okay. he has to do nefarious things with a pig um like you you knew then at that point that was i think that was probably the first time mainstream that i saw him in something i was like 
Yeah, this guy's going places. Like, uh, and I really, I really love it that he's. I think you know has been given this kind of vehicle to just stamp his name on it because damn, does he pull out a good job for this as well? Like, he's a he's. They're both damn fine actors, but like they're both given a, the the best performances, and I love it. Yeah, 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 really good stuff. Um, so lots of symbolism too with the Green Man. Lots of Green Man. Mm. Mm. Um, but I know he's important to this, but I'll look it up real quick. Yeah, kind of the initial my uh, after extensive research. Um, Green Man is primarily interpreted as a symbol of rebirth, representing the cycle of new growth that occurs every spring. The Green Man motif has many variations. So maybe that's her being re- her chance at rebirth and to move on and to process her her emotions. But what I was curious about is at the end when her friend shows up. I mean, um, Riley. Mm. we only then do we notice that she's pregnant riley's mm. pregnant at the very end mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. harper seems to be pretty satisfied about that yeah um yeah i mean i didn't really i'm not sure what i took away from that to be honest with you um what, what were your thoughts so i was i was wondering because okay she's just so she's <laughs> She sees the five or six other men are mm. uh, are birth, and I'm not quite sure what they want with her. But I mean, do they want her? What What is their mm. What is their What's their goal? Like what's yeah, their, what's, yeah? What's their What's their end goal? Um, because she does end up speaking with James again, and they have their their conversation. But the the end when she sees the that her friend is pregnant, I thought maybe that's another version of rebirth or another chance another like a fresh start like a spring mm. but why her being pregnant would be such a, a reason for her to be sad i'm not sure exactly what that meant yeah i mean you could i mean you could look at it as just like with all the kind of uh, birthings that the the men have done um maybe this is just like the next cycle of life um but in a kind of natural way as opposed to the kind of um, ethereal way that's been going on from her experiences. Um, I mean, I, I, maybe I'm clutching at straws here sort of thing. But um, yeah, I think she, I mean, I can't remember, did Harper ever, did uh, from the flashbacks, did they ever sort of talk about um, raising children or anything like that? Was that anything? That, that, that was never really a thing, was it? Between no. Them? Yeah, that's what I was curious <clears throat> about that. Yeah. I mean, maybe this is a red herring. Maybe. Uh, I was looking at the cast list. There, there are, there is another character, uh, which is the other police officer that uh, interviews her after they apprehend the. So yeah. there is a, so there is another woman mm. that isn't played by uh, Rory Kinnear. Yeah. Is that important in some way? I don't know. I mean, it's interesting that why wouldn't they just put? Because <clears throat> does he does does he play uh, a woman? Like, does is his face on a woman at any time throughout the film? No, I don't just think men. there is. It's always men, yeah. So maybe that maybe that's it. Maybe it's just to kind of do that uh, the clear definition that um, Rory Kinnear's face is just on men, not women, sort of thing. So the the other female um, characters that are in this story have their own identity maybe mm. perhaps and it's just like yeah through her through her like eyes um she's as i said it's like this delusion is it delusion i don't know but like um I, i'll go with this kind of thing of seeing the same face on every man and every one of them having a trait or a kind of characteristic that she uh, is perceiving as either predatory or um uh having ill well ill, Ill well ill will ill will ill will towards her yeah that's the one um yeah so i don't know it's a strange one i think maybe that was maybe not wanting to say that uh, but maybe that female police officer is just put there to kind of give that kind of definite line in the sand of there are other characters out here sort of thing that do have their own identity but it's just literally the men um that all look like rory Kinnear. um hmm. yeah and she does mention that she was close by. That's why they responded so fast. So she doesn't live in this little 
village or whatever it is. So maybe it's it's just contained to that little area. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be a tough sell for the B&B though, right? <laughs> hey, I mean, I think you'd get people going. Like, come to, come to our place where everyone looks the same. <laughs> yes. I think it'd probably be a, a bestseller sort of thing. I think I might go. I might go there. Just for the uh, the shits and the giggles. Watch them give birth five or six times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure a fun I mean, Saturday night. It'd be like a traumatic event, but it'd be something to tell your grandkids, you know. So you wouldn't forget that, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not in a, not in a heartbeat. No, 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 not at all. But yeah, I think I guess the the question. And there's no right or wrong answer, but I guess the question is: Did it really happen? Do all the people look the same, or is this just her working through her grief? I think that's what you take away as a kind of viewer. Like you either, as I said, like you either go down one of like three or four routes. You either go down the route that she's an unreliable narrator. What she's seen is not actually there, but is that in itself telling the viewer you're gaslighting the character much that she's been uh, had that done to her sort of thing. So is it kind of like a kind of vocal kind of talk to the audience member saying, if you do think this, because we're sort of pre-programmed in a way to kind of think this, like what I was saying earlier about like when you just see one character talking to one person for like the, the duration and you get that kind of thing. It's happened in a lot of mostly like who done it's type of thing where it's yeah. like, um, you know, you get a character who's, Oh, but he only spoke to this character all the time. He was never there. It wasn't there. He never had a brother or something like that, you know? Um, so in that kind of really highbrow way, that could work. Um, that the actual, the the direction of it is like, well, actually, now that you think that, you're in that mentality and you mm. shouldn't be in that mentality. So, hey, you know, go check yourself, slap on the wrist. You could have that view. Um, you could have the other view of she actually has gone to this town and all the people there do have the, the same face. Um, and she just, for whatever reason, is okay with it and that is just the kind of case of she's in this kind of little gothic town and this is just happening but she's okay with it you can have the third option that you know maybe what she's seeing like what we're seeing is just one face but she's seen all the different kind of people and these are all characters that she's seen with different faces hmm. um and we're taking it from a different viewpoint like there's so many ways you can interpret it that it's like it really is down to you as the viewer it's kind of like come away with your own expectation, come away with your own. And I think that's what works here because I think primarily, um, I mean, I don't know if this is what Garland's vision was, but like um, if, you know, if someone, if you have been in a kind of uh, toxic or uh, noxious relationship, if you have been in that kind of situation where someone's tried to gaslight you, if you have been in that kind of thing where it's, I think it's then it's like, what's what's your story? Like what what, what are your viewpoints? And I think if you have, a conversation with um you know steve from down the pub or you have one from mary around the corner everyone's going to have their don't, uh, different interpretations um based on their feelings and i think this is one of those type of films that does resonate with your feelings more so than your understanding of what's actually happening on the screen mm. and i think that's really interesting um you, do, you don't get a lot of films that that do that that actually kind of sort of uh, resonate with your gut rather than your mind in that respect of things. So that's why I, I really enjoyed it because I kind of came away thinking that uh, actually all my interpretation of it was that, yeah, she's seen all these faces, but she's not intimidated by it because for me, the the face thing is just, um, or the, the, the actor face rather, is just more of a kind of, um, uh, what's, there's a word I'm looking for. It's just like a kind of template, for example, mm -hmm. That there are they all they all are different characters, but by putting this one actor's kind of face on all of them, it kind of transpires that actually all their traits are coming out, and they're all very um, uh, ominous to her in that respect. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. The so the giving birth the birth at the end. I guess you, a lot of different ways you can interpret it, but one way I thought if if we do use the the stamp the viewpoint of all men are the same that they're all, you know, they're predatory or they're, they're trying to guess like her, that, that that's her perception of whether, um, you know, it's true or not. But I, I kind of thought them giving birth to each other, like just continue to pop each other out. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, I don't know if they're just, um, it's like this 
body horror way that they're manifesting that this is like this endless cycle that's going to keep happening because all men are the same at least in her mind yeah no definitely um yeah i i I totally agree i think that like as you said like um it's an endless cycle for her in a particular sort of way um it's interesting to kind of like see she doesn't come across a character that's actually uh was not innocent but is very um say like altruistic to her or very protective of her you don't really get that do you Mm. that i can see that i can remember um and i think that could have probably been in the mix i think there could have been a kind of one of the rory kinnear characters that was actually um wanting to protect her in a certain way because i think that would have then let uh, given the viewer like a bit more of um uh, you know a different kind of uh pool to kind of deal with because every other character is yeah has some sort of semblance of that you know serpent at the tree sort mm-hmm. of thing like giving her either bad advice or telling her bad things or doing bad things to her um so that whole rebirthing like yeah, maybe maybe that is the kind of case. Like it's because it's her mind. It's her it's her thing of like just seeing this endless cycle of men um, doing the the type of uh, bad things that she's experienced in the past. Uh, when does it stop? When do you get to that point? And is it the kind of uh, the end result is that she has to take action herself and then she gets out of it by herself and that's her own kind of fulfillment from this? Is that her kind of arc in terms of? how she gets out of the area. I don't know. Like it's, yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty shocking. Uh, I wasn't expecting that, but no, no, that, that mm-hmm. kind of came a bit left field, a bit of curveball. Um, when you had the, the kit, like, as you said, like when the, um, uh, the naked, Rory Kinnear character puts his hand through and she stakes him. But I think that's the start of the kind of the body horror, the Cronenberg um, end act, if you will. Um, and it just kind of goes from there. Then you have the the child. Um, yeah. And then you just have this very weird scene. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I loved it, though. I mean, you know, at the yeah. end of the day... Um, trying to think of uh, the only thing I would say in terms of um, sort of critiques as such is is that I think the pacing is a little off. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just the kind of, I mean, we'll be talking about lamb tomorrow, which um, I have, there are big issues with it's a slow burn. It's a slow burn, but um, yeah, this, this is kind of a slow burn, but also, there's so many like little oddities going throughout that you're kind of like always sitting there going, I want to know what happens next. Like the, the part when she's like walking by herself and then she sees this thing, she's in the tunnel. There's all this, once again, this very malevolent force lurking throughout. You kind of feel like she's being watched at every moment, which I loved. Um, and then it kind of, you have these like kind of silly anecdotes with Jeffrey or something like that. And it's like, well, okay. It, but there's still a sinister undertone throughout right. everything, which I loved. Um, and definitely very gothic folklore horror going on here. Um, yeah, it's just it's just that it, I felt like the end, the end act, the third act, if you will, just kind of it dramatically it, it dialed up to 11 um, in a very kind of uh, sort of went from a kind of everything's been going sort of okay and then it just went whoop, and you're like whoa okay i wasn't expecting it wasn't wasn't prepared for it so yeah there isn't a whole lot of bit well there's a little bit of build up but not to that, <laughs> not to that. yeah it, i mean also i guess you could sort of say it becomes a bit of a home invasion film at the end mm. um you know uh in terms of her barricading herself and there's like when you see like there's a bit of foreshadowing as well when you see the axe or whatever at the beginning it's like oh i wonder if that's going to come through at the end um it's like with evil dead rise when you see the wood chipper in the garage you're like well we know that's going to come a bit later on sort of thing so you know uh it's that kind of thing the chekhov's gun approach but um yeah no i um 
I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think that it asked you questions that, once again, it's more of a feeling type of film. And I don't know really how to um, explain it more than that in terms of you can you can try and digest what's going on. And as I said, like it is definitely one of those type of films where you come out of it and you may have a knee jerk reaction to what you've just seen, what you've just kind of witnessed on the screen. But then after a while, you kind of go away, you have a cup of tea um, or a whiskey and you kind of think, Oh, actually maybe this, maybe that. And there's different interpretations. And that's what I love about it. As I said, like if you speak to probably five different people, you'll probably get five different reactions of what they perceive to be. I don't want to say their truth because that goes into a whole like different <laughs> kettle of fish, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, their perceptions of what actually happened. And I think you can get that. Uh, and that's what I loved about it. Like you definitely can get a lot of different interpretations and I'm quite happy to kind of sit and, uh, hear everyone's different interpretation go like you know what i never thought of that that's actually a really good idea and like you've said some things tonight that i've been sitting there going like yeah i didn't actually think of that that's really mm. good yeah i def but i agree with it as well but like, if i wholeheartedly disagreed i'd be like eh, yeah. i don't think yeah. so i don't think so but but they're all good and that's the thing yeah yeah no oh, i think it, I, I read somewhere that alex garland didn't really have an explanation and i think maybe he does but i think it's better to not give an i think i think i mean i don't I think he's a wise enough director to have his own interpretation, yeah. but is wise enough to be like, well, if people are coming away going, what was that all about? Then he'll be like, I just make the film. Yeah. You watch it. You tell me what you think. Cause that's in my kind of, in my understanding, that's the best kind of filmmaking. You can have like these linear films where it's like, you know, a uh, good guy versus bad guy, that's all great. That's fantastic. Um, you can have like, you know, in, uh, inception type films, which are a bit more, you know, using your kind of cerebral cortex to kind of find out what's going on. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, you can also have films that, um, you know, challenge what you perceive and then can also, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure there's probably a lot of people, as I said before, that have, have gone through what Harper's gone through. And they'll have maybe a completely different explanation as to what they think. And I think if it starts a debate, if it starts a discussion, then I'm all for it. Um, you know, and I think that's what this film does. So I think he's, I think he's wise enough to kind of like just go, hey, oh, I, I, I don't have a explanation to these things. I think he does. I think he has his own. He would have made the film like, you know, with Annihilation, for example, like, you know, based on the books. Um, once again, you can... Uh, you can read the books and have your own interpretation as to what you think has been going on. And although this has to condense down a lot of stuff and there's always that kind of um, book versus film, you know, what do you leave out? What can you mm -hmm. kind of put in? Uh, how do you trim the fat in that respect? Um, you know, I what, what did you, have you watched Annihilation, Steve? I have. I, yeah. I wasn't a big fan of the end. <laughs> you gotta say. Yeah. I mean, once again, it's, it's kind of that whole like last minute thing, isn't it? The third act is always a bit of a hard one to wrap up. Um, I don't believe, for example, in this one, there was any kind of production issue. I don't think there was any kind of script issues or anything like that. I think it was more the kind of case of this was just the way we're going and you either accept it or, you know, you don't. And it's like, that's fine. But um, I think it probably will. I think some people may watch it and go, what? what have I just seen? I don't understand. I don't like what I'm seeing right now. This is not good. But I mean, if you've seen any kind of Cronenberg in the past or yeah. anything like that, then it's, it's, you know, um, it's just the new, the new age of it in that respect, I guess. But um, yeah, but I really enjoyed it. So yeah. I think in a way, I think they, they didn't have a whole lot of build up to that body horror section because they wanted it to be so Impactful. shocking. Yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely agree. Um, I mean, apart from that one, uh, well, that sort of that 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 whole start of that scene, um, you don't really have any other uh, elements of body horror, really, do you? That I can no. remember off the top of my head. I mean, you got a naked man walking around, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Um, it's Tuesday. <laughs> who hasn't walked around naked before? It's fine. <laughs> um, no. So it is it? I think it does. Once again, it's that pacing element and i say this now in a, in a positive way um that your 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 expectations aren't really looking at this and then when it does happen it's like whoa where did that come from um the same thing that i found with uh uh, uh possessor sort of thing uh with um andrew riseborough 
like there's a moment where it is a violent film throughout but there's a there's a moment with a with a cleaver and some fingers and it's like oh yeah that yeah that for me just kind of came left field and i was like oh 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 was it you know oh feeling the fingers oh oh but um <laughs> But then again, once again, it's like different strokes of different folks. Um, I literally yesterday watched Arachnophobia again um, mm. because, uh, yeah, we just, you know, my partner and I were just kind of sitting there like going through some fun. And I was like, you know what? We haven't seen for a lot. And I, I do not like spiders. I do not like spiders. So I'm sort of sitting there yeah, scratching myself at certain points. And I know like it's it's an old film and everything like that. You know, it's being remade and everything. But um, yeah, I'm sitting there going like, oh, no, I can't. Mm. Mm, just making me feel a bit queasy little scenes are making me feel a bit itchy you know so uh i I guess you'll you'll find that um if you don't like a man birthing himself then uh might make you feel a bit queasy yeah it may not be for you (laughs) (laughs) how do you prepare someone for that though like how do you i don't know there's no words yeah there, there are no words i don't think like I, I, I don't know if you can. Um, there is no way. Um, I don't know. Gosh, um, I'm trying to think of the only thing I can uh, subscribe it to is society. Um, I mean, that came out in the in the '80s kind of thing. But there's that whole like massive bodies kind of coming together in one gargantuan mass of flesh in that respect. That's the only thing I can really think of off the top of my head that I can compare it to. Um, if I thought about it a bit more, there probably would be more examples. Um, but it just comes out of nowhere. And that's the whole, yeah. that's the whole beauty of it. So um, strap in. Uh, if, you, if you haven't <laughs> seen it, then uh, yeah, I definitely <laughs> recommend it. And um, just prepare yourselves. Yeah, even if you haven't seen it, you, you've gone this far and then you somebody burden the like men burden themselves even that you you're not ready you're not prepared for it it's a whole other thing yeah i mean you know uh we, we we all see like when we're growing up those kind of educational videos of how babies are made and stuff like that and that's just it's taking it to an nth degree i guess it's just um going to another kind of area of maybe that maybe that's another element as well is like you don't see men reproducing themselves in that kind of way so maybe that's a kind of element of horror not horror but an element of not something that's usually seen mm. i guess yeah. um yeah mm. yeah i don't know but like as you said like the colors the saturation of this film is quite exquisite sort of thing the greens pop the reds are yeah as you said like the flashbacks um are done this way and the um the sound as well that the score is really well done um the kind of very orchestra type element at play here um yeah just a, yeah. just a really well designed film just really nicely packaged um bit of a gothic horror but wicker man vibe yeah 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 i think the the soundtrack fits the folk horror pretty well yeah definitely definitely um yeah kind of as soon as i watched this to be honest with you the first time <clears throat> i was immediately wanting to watch wicker man again um hmm. and other films of of your like back in the day of like the 70s where you know people go to like these mysterious islands it kind of put me in that vibe you know of, like i want to want you know to go, to go to scottish moorlands and you know investigate things that may be a bit paranormal yeah <laughs> about to check the the b and b uh areas that'd be a nice little uh, having a pub 10 minutes away a little while oh that'd yeah be, that'd be really nice yeah well steve next time you're in london sort of thing like come when you're coming down i can i can give you all the recommendations nice. uh go we can go to scotland go to wales yeah yeah I, I plan to be in glasgow in 2024 oh okay okay so um i can give you some great recommendations nice yeah I think uh, I think we both enjoyed this one. It's not for yeah. everyone, I would say. But no, no, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it's it's. I I would say like you know in terms of like a a score out of ten sort of thing, I'd give it a solid eight. Um, and I, I it would be a recommendation for you know um, anyone who is a fan of like the kind of Cronenberg sort mm-hmm. of school 
anyone who's a fan of the kind of gothic horror in that kind of uh, little quaint village type of style. Um, and anyone who, yeah, like, as I said, like the themes there, as, as you mentioned, Steve, there are so many themes going to play here um, that it's it's really, it's got a caveat for everyone, I think. Um, relationships, uh, as I said, like toxic relationships, um, guilt, um, you know, how, how people deal with that guilt and the way they deal with things going on in their lives. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the, and the, and the acting's phenomenal as well. Like I can't fault the acting at all. Um, yeah. you've got some bona fide, uh, British, uh, stars going on here. So, yeah. Yeah. Very good. I enjoyed it. It's, uh, I can see why some people wouldn't, but I, I dug it. That was cool. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, before we sign off, uh, where can people find you if they want to find you in your work? Um, you can find me, uh, I've written uh, two books. One is a dystopian um, book about the kind of a potential future. Um, the other one is a collection of short horror stories. Um, and you can find me on YouTube at Horrible um, and uh, on Twitter on Mr. Selfie. Yeah. yeah, I can vouch for Birthday Treat. Everyone should go read it. It was a very good book. Go check it out. <laughs> and go, uh, go subscribe to uh, Tony's channel as well. I'll leave the link down below. So cool. Thanks for uh, coming to hang out with me to talk about, talk about this one with me. No problem, Steve. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Tomorrow's a, a fun one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow's going to be a fun one, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll find out here in about an hour. So, How are you getting on with the uh, A24 challenge? Um, so far, I've only had really one that I didn't care for. But other mm -hmm. than that, it's been decent to good. Yeah. So yeah, not bad. Awesome. Not so bad. we're about we're about halfway through now, aren't we? What day is it? What's the day today? Yeah, I only think I only have yeah. I have a week from today. So, oh, nice. You're gonna be like, what's the story? Be like, Oof. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna leave a couple months for the next challenge. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm done with challenges for a while after this. <laughs> We've nice done a great job, man. Yeah, nice to see. Great, yeah. great seeing you. I have a lot of help. Always yeah. great to discuss them as well, sort of thing with you. So definitely appreciate it so thanks everyone for watching and we'll see everyone hopefully tomorrow <laughs> if you're watching yeah. this <laughs> Bye.